I think I know what you're feeling. Ever since you were a little boy, you've been living with so many unresolved things. Well, take it from an old man. Those things send us down a road. They make us who we are. And if anyone's destined for greatness, it's you, son. You owe the world your gifts. You just have to figure out how to use them. A, B, N. It's headphones, Neil! What's up guys and welcome back to another episode of Headphones Neil Reviews. I'm your host as always, Headphones Neil, bringing you a follow-up review to my Spider-Man trilogy with Tobey Maguire with my review for the Amazing Spider-Man duology with Andrew Garfield. So I finally got a chance to finish watching the two movies and thought I would give a quick update as to what I like, dislike, and general overall thoughts of the movies. And I want to say to just start it right off the bat is it took a different direction from the Tobey Maguire um, Spider-Man trilogy in that it took a little bit more serious and down to earth look at Spider-Man. So while when you watch them back to back, you, you will see that the Tobey Maguire Spider-Man was a little bit more on the fun, lighthearted side, except for the third one, which it took a little bit of a darker turn, but it serves as a good transition into the Andrew Garfield films, which were more serious, a little bit darker, not necessarily gritty, but you have Andrew Garfield's um, acting, which was really good to have a lighthearted, fun feel to it, but in the general overtones of a darker film, especially to start it off with the genetic manipulation and Dr. Connors and the Lizard, and then into the second film with um, Harry Osborn and his genetic disease that he got from his father, um, the whole thing with Electro and all of that, and then like in the first film, the loss of Gwen Stacy's dad, and then the loss of Gwen Stacy in the second film. So all in all, when you're watching the films, it's not that either set is better or worse than the others but if you want a more light film then you get um you can watch the spider-man trilogy if you want a little bit more of a darker take then watch the spider-man duology the only thing missing really from the andrew garfield films is a third film to finish hashing hashing out um the ptsd of losing gwen stacy's dad and gwen stacy herself it feels like they um kind of closed it out a little bit too quickly at the end of the second film either because probably the ratings weren't as high as they expected but or they weren't planning on doing a third film because it feels like the a third film or the way they were going it feels like they were hashing going to hash all of that out and rounded out but then they just made it a positive note they, or they ended the second film on a very positive note to kind of cap it all at the end of the film so and then they also well they do kind of bring it up in spider-man no way home that well, bringing him up with bringing up the whole thing with the rhino and all of that but for me it would have been nice to have a better another film to close out the trilogy and basically just deal with that because I feel like they were doing a good job to bring all of that up. The balancing act that um, Peter Parker and um, Spider-Man have to deal with, is um, the relationship comparison or the parallels with uh, Spider-Man and Gwen Stacy versus um, or Peter Man, Peter Parker and Gwen Stacy versus Peter Parker and Mary Jane Watson. Um, you kind of see those compare and, compare and contrast, so that's why it's like one of those things where they were... That's why I think they're both good films, it's just that they have a slightly different overtone to both um, sets of films. Um, the only thing that was, or the main thing though that stands out is between the films is that the Andrew Garfield films has less build-up as far as the relationship between Peter Parker and 
on Uncle Ben and Aunt May, but they do bring up uh, Peter Parker's parents. So I actually like that in this set of films because it's one of those things where we don't really hear too much about his parents, but it's nice to have a little bit more history there. Um, and then we have more time in discovering his powers, creating the suit, more stuff on the scientific side of Peter Parker's intelligence compared to the first one. The first one had a little bit about that, how Peter Parker's smart and he's into science and all that, but minimal. It was touched on very briefly throughout the film, so it kind of felt like it was lacking, but the Andrew Garfield films bring that up better. Um, and the one thing that stood out the most was that Peter Parker has a New York accent. I couldn't tell you how if it was accurate or not, but in general it stood out as something you could hear in his voice versus the Tobey Maguire Peter Parker, so that was of note. And then, of course, um, Emma Stone as uh, Gwen Stacy was better portrayed in these in the Andrew Garfield films um, just because she was smarter than Peter Parker. She's working at Oscorp. She generally has brains on her and she's on her way to going to Oxford versus the ditzy blonde style portrayal that we saw in the Tobey Maguire P um, Spider-Man. So just one of those things that stood out in general as far as um, why I think um, the Tobey Maguire or the Andrew Garfield films were good um, but I'm not, it's hard to say why they were not um, as well received, I guess. For me, I kind of, I like them, I like both sets of films, but they're very unique in their portrayal. So um, it's just one of those things that having a third film would have been nice to see how they would have closed out the Andrew Garfield films. But um, overall, if I was to grade them, I'd probably give them about a B to... B to a B plus. Um, overall, they were good. The two films were good. They were very. They had a good balance between everything. I think the main thing, maybe why they didn't weren't picked up, or they weren't as well received, was because um, we started off with a lizard, then the second film you had Electro, and then they kind of rushed the whole um, Harry Osborn Green Goblin thing by the end of the film. So. It probably would have been a better film or better uh, trilogy to have Green Goblin in the third film um, and potentially lose Gwen Stacy and still have lose Gwen Stacy, but have send Peter down that whole darkness that he brings that Andrew Gar Garfield brings up in Spider-Man No Way Home. So that way, in the third film, it can be brought up as a comparison to the Green Goblin. Um, potentially having them team up and then coming back or whatever the story is but having that face off to, for having um, Andrew Garfield's Peter Parker go to the dark and then come back into the light um, and then also have that comparison to what happened with um, Tobey Maguire's Peter Man or Peter Parker not Peter Man Peter Parker in um, Spider-Man 3 with uh, Venom Harry as um the green goblin and then sandman so that's one of those things that they i think they could have pulled off so maybe there was the third film wasn't green lit and maybe the they weren't making as much money as they were hoping so they canceled it they added a little bit to the amazing spider-man 2 and rounded that out so they um didn't have unused footage to just sit around and not do anything so that's all there is for this particular review. So if you have any questions, comments, feedback, um, which Spider-Man um, series did you like better out of the Tobey Maguire versus um, Andrew Garfield ones, you can comment on this post at, on Twitter at PatelN01. The website is headphonesneal.reviews for past episodes, subscription links, supporting the show, and all of that good stuff. And as a patron to the show, you will get um, access to bonus content after the episode by supporting the show on Patreon at patreon.com slash PatelN01. But thanks for tuning into this particular episode, and until next time.